I should welcome you all to my channel first. So, here we go. Welcome to Amaka Intellectual Factory, where I host podcasts and many other interesting stuff. Today, I'm gonna be reacting, or more like analyzing, a black female YouTuber who talks about her encounter with a demon. I particularly love how she calls this person a demon. And I'll tell you why. You see, we talk about evil, good, angels, and demons. But what I have found is that we don't really understand these things. We don't realize that these so-called angels and demons are people like you and I. When you look into historical documents, there were people who were described as demons. Take for instance, the Huns, who were described by Romans not only as demons, but the ultimate of all savage barbarians, the scourge of God. And the Romans were themselves savage and barbaric. Topic for another day. My point is that when we talk about angels and demons, we are talking about people for the most part. That is how you should view the concepts of angels and demons because they not only manifest in the spiritual realm, they also manifest in the physical realm, usually through people who have become vessels for demonic infestation. People being vessels for demonic infestation is a special topic on its own, which will be discussed in another video. So that's what we have in this video that I'm gonna be analyzing. And without much ado, here we go. So I think I just came in contact with a real demon and I'm gonna tell you which one so I'm taking some mental I need to take my teeth off this I'm taking some mental health like time off from my job job and what I've been doing for the past few weeks um during that time is like taking care of my personal business and doing lift um, like I usually do on my downtime or spare time, I do lift. 
She starts by saying she's taking a mental health time off from her job. While she is not specific about why she's taking some mental health time off from her job, I can categorically tell you that she is doing that because they are messing with her at her job. This is the experience of every sane black woman. There are too many people who want you down. Too many people. And sadly, that includes black men and black women as well. But let's continue to listen to her video. So today I've been doing lips since about 8 o'clock, 8.30. Um, everything's been smooth, everything's been fine up until just about five minutes ago. I too used to be a Lyft driver, and I will tell you now, demons run that company. The hellish and traumatizing experience I had on the Lyft platform and other app delivery platforms is a story I reserve for another day. These people can listen to you through your Lyft app. They can send fake passengers to you. They can hold your ride requests and for hours and hours, even in a hotspot, you will not get any ride requests. They can send passengers who enter your car for the sole purpose of ruining your ratings and making false complaints. When I was a Lyft driver, my problem started when I appreciated a top Lyft official, a white woman, who responded to my email about an issue I had on the Lyft platform, and she solved it. I'm not gonna go into that here because my experience on the Lyft platform is a special series on its own. Back to the story at hand. Um, there was this older white lady. She couldn't be no more than maybe in her early 50s, mid 50s, if I could guess. Um, heavy set lady, uh, very unattractive, you know, unkept. Y'all get my drift. Take note of the description she gives of this person she describes as a demon. She said it's an older white woman, heavy set, meaning overweight to obese and very unattractive. I have had many personal unfortunate experience with white women and a lot of them fit this description. In fact, this morning, I had an unfortunate experience with one of Banje white woman in my apartment. This is a very serious issue. I just wanted us to take note of the person she described as a demon. Let's continue. So I pick her up, we speak, um, she seemed normal for the most part, but you know, I don't know how many of y'all are like this, but with me, um, God has gave me the gift of discernment and the moment I come in contact with a person, I can feel their spirit immediately. Like something felt so unclean about her, um, not just based off of her appearance, but just her spirit. Like her spirit was unsettled. Let's just say that. So she gets. I want you to take note of what she said. It wasn't just the appearance of this white woman that was filthy. I'm paraphrasing now anyway. You can always go back and check out the video. I'll post the link below my video. It wasn't just the appearance of this white woman that was filthy, but her spirit and aura was filthy. If you are a person with any element of light in you, and I'm not talking about perfection, you could have your shortcomings. Nevertheless, you are righteous, have a conscience, and strive to do the right thing. When you come to the West, 
These types of people will be part of your cultural shock. I call it the Caucasian perversion. It will really shock you. And if you have a reflective mind, a contemplative mind, you will begin to wonder how black Americans are surviving buried in this sea of Caucasian perversion. Because when these people come at you with that demonic energy, they don't care how shocking or traumatizing it is. Caucasian sex tourism in Africa and all other non-white regions have always been a global pandemic. No one ever really calls it by its name. However, many people in Africa, and I can't speak for other people in non-white regions of the world, many people in Africa can manage their lives without having to deal with the Caucasian perversion, even though lots of Caucasians are in their countries for so-called investments. Take a look at Africa. It is increasingly becoming uninhabitable thanks to European investments and their economic hitmen. Anyway, let's continue. So, five, ten minutes go by. Now her conversations are getting more lengthier, okay? Um, we are in the woods. You know, I'm taking her to the countryside So by this time. So, I'm writing. Um, she's not saying anything to me. She's on her phone the entire time. So, she's like moaning like moaning you know like in a sexual way so i look at my my rearview mirror and i'm like checking to make sure like she's not it's not like health related or she's passed out or something like is she really intentionally making this sound i mean i get it she was heavy set like really big woman so that's what my mind kind of just went to it resorted straight to oh let me check on her to make sure she's good no okay so boom I look back at her. She's rubbing her breast, right? I don't say anything. I don't say anything in that moment, but I was extremely uncomfortable. She's got the phone to her ear. She's rubbing the other breast and she's got, she has her eyes closed. Now that's where you messed up. You said she was rubbing her breasts and moaning. You should have immediately had your camera on, making a video of what she was doing as you ask her to get out of your car. So to see this and not say anything was your first mess up. And I know it's not really your fault because these demonic behavior is not something you are accustomed to. Let's continue. Moaning on the phone and then she proceeds to say, some provocative things so basically to make a long story short she was on a sex line okay and um it was like a it's a chat it was a chat line that's because you could tell like she would hang up with one person then boom it's a new person you could tell she was talking to different people because the conversation kind of fluctuated you know like from hey how are you doing to a sexual conversation to uh where are you from to a uh, another conversation asking what state you're in or, like that you know y'all know what i'm saying so then so then um we, we're getting further now it's about 15 20 minutes we almost there we almost there so um i didn't say anything you know because i'm in the middle of a ride I, I, where am i gonna put her out at <laughs> you know like i don't want any confrontation so i don't say anything so then like i said not doing anything at that point was your first mess up let's continue after that she was like eat my pu you know the rest please and then she started moaning loud like she was into it into it as if i was not here like i wasn't here like y'all it was so uncomfortable so scary it was weird it was strange and so i started slowing down i'm about to pull over at this point you know because i'm about to put you out my car <laughs> so i look back at her y'all she got her hand in her pants this lady is masturbating 
in my car, in my vehicle, while I'm in it. When I tell you I started to fume, okay? I said, ma'am, you cannot do that in here. You got to get out. I'm about to cancel your ride. Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. Please, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to. I say, no, I am beyond offended. That right there is outright disrespectful. Y'all, her eyes were black as tar. Okay? This lady eyes went from blue to black. This color blue to black. But while she's apologizing to me, she's smirking. She's like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. But she's looking directly at me. It wasn't normal. It was not normal. Y'all, that was the spirit of perversion all over that lady. The, it, it's like the, the more I walk with God, the closer I get to him, he allows me to see things that I don't know if I'm ready for. She said she told the woman she was mad at what she was doing. This is America. And we have laws that address this type of Caucasian perversion. Notice how even at this point, she doesn't talk about recording this woman as she comes with this demon sexual energy into her car. That white woman is an agent of darkness, a vessel for demonic infestation that was sent to pervert her and her spirit. It is not ordinary that the black woman in America's image is rapidly becoming that of a whore. The driving force behind this is the Caucasian perversion. Study history, look into history. And then she talks about the change of the white woman's eye color from blue to black. Demons in flesh are real. Let's continue. It made me so angry. It made me so angry. Cause it's like, why are you doing that? But I know it wasn't her. It, that wasn't her. It was something else in that lady. My dear, Igbos in their prime named their children based on their experiences, which shaped their philosophical thoughts. There is truly nothing new under the sun. So being angry isn't going to cut it, because as the Igbo would say and name their child, Azi Kiwi. Abrahamic religions have come and caused serious confusion of the Igbo mind. Because if you ask the average Igbo person, including those in their 60s and 70s, what the name Azikiwe means, they will not be able to tell you. It's one of those Igbo philosophical ancient names that have survived till today because of Namdi Azikiwe. Igbos encountered an inverted type of people and they identified these weird people as Azi or Asi. The original people Igbos identified as Azi or Asi were a black people. However, that identity was also applied to the non-black demons who behaved no different and in a lot of ways way worse than the black people Igbos called Aze or Asi. Interestingly, written history says a great deal about a people identified as Azilians. And according to Lewis Spence and his works published on Atlantis from the late 1800s to early 1900s, the Azilians were the ones that destroyed Atlantis. In the books, After God is Debian, Volumes 1 and 2, by John Anenechuku Ume, the author talks about the Igbo philosophical teachings on ages of time, which he called Oga, that is, age. You know, like golden age, silver age, 
Bronze Age and Iron Age. Like that. The Igbo word for this type of age is Oga. According to John Anenechufu Ume, we are in Ogazi, the age of Azi, which is an age of survival because demons are bold in this age, like this beautiful young black female YouTuber said. Interestingly, the late Professor Catherine Achalono, the greatest archaeologist no one knows about because they have done everything in their power to hide her existence and teachings from the world, also taught these teachings about Oga Aze. She even went further to connect the Igbo age cycle, which Igbos called Oga cycles, to the Hindu cosmological cycle known as Yuga cycles. I didn't mean to go this deep in my analysis, but it's good that I kinda introduced these Igbo cosmological and philosophical teachings now as I will be talking more about them in later videos. So subscribe, okay? I've got lots of good stuff to share. But why did I bring up all these Igbo philosophical and cosmological teachings? I'll tell you why. Because of the teachings on Azzi. Just as our beautiful black sister here expressed anger over what that Obanje white woman was doing in her car, so did past people express anger when they encountered these Azzi or Asi people. And when they expressed anger over their encounter with these Azi or Asi people, do you know what the Igbo teachers of old will tell them? They will tell them, Azi Kiwe. And what does Azi Kiwe mean? It means Azi is greater than anger. For the simpletons or simple minded ones, and I mean no disrespect, but many of us are confused, distracted, and in a trance. We don't know our left from our right, so please pardon me because the intention is not to offend, but call it as it is. Many of us are simpletons or simple-minded by the design of people who don't wish us well. So. For the simpletons or simple-minded ones, it is not enough to get mad at Azi behavior. This is where strategy comes in. You must apply strategy when dealing with Azi. Subscribe to my other channel, Amaka Narrates, and listen to my audiobook version of one of the most popular military strategy books, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Anger alone is not enough. So while this Obanje white woman was violating this beautiful black sister's car, our black sister still didn't pull out a camera to record this whole demonic encounter. Maybe she did, but based on this video, at no point does she say that she recorded what this Obanje white woman did. This is America, y'all. There are laws against such lewd conducts in public. Our sister doesn't even realize that she is entitled to legal compensations for this disgusting nonsense she had to deal with. She doesn't even mention a potential lawsuit. It's just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Or should I say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus because that is the correct way to pronounce the Spanish name, quotes and unquote, Jesus. This is what Christianity in its entirety does to you. It is paralyzing and clouds your judgment. So I'm gonna let the video run to the end and any other thing I have to say, I would say and that would be it. When she got in my car, she had this smell on her that is indescribable. 
the lady smelled like it wasn't fishy. It wasn't like how you would think a, a, a female with bad odor smell. It was beyond that. Like it was bad. My entire car was lit up. I had my windows down. When I dropped her off, I had to let all my windows down to let my car out, 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 out. I, had, I just went in, the, I'm in the store. I just went and bought these. I put it up in here and I sprayed this stuff right here. It is so, listen, it smelled like death. Like death. I'm sorry y'all this is not something I don't y'all gotta stay prayed up out here you see I see these stories all the time where people go live people make videos they talk about how they encounter you know supernatural things and I, I, I've always believed in that stuff and I've seen things before but but not this confined not this close where i didn't know what to do you know like so i just started praying you know for the rest of the, the remainder of the ride like she, you know when i thought i had pulled over and she was saying she was sorry and she didn't mean you know to offend me or whatever um it got even scarier like after her saying that to me so i just started praying i just i was driving like 80 90 miles per hour on this narrow road trying to hurry up and get her to where she's going like i just wanted her out of my car you know i wasn't afraid of what she would do to me i was afraid of that spirit like i don't know i don't know like i don't want those type of spirits around me to defile me because i'm working hard on staying away from that stuff and it was all over her it reeked through her pores demons have a smell i'm not bugging like i know what i seen this lady eyes were black she got out of my car y'all and i looked back at her she was like thank you like nothing ever happened all i said was god bless you and i drove off y'all it's real out here i got this. The smell she's talking about could be one of these types of smells. Feces, rotten animal sperm, most likely a billy goat sperm, or just rotten human sperm. So like I said, the smell could be most likely one of these. Feces, sperm, vomit, or rotten eggs. There are other very putrid odors these people apply to themselves that I have smelled but haven't been able to identify them. There are chemicals that mimic these odors as well, like butyric acid and sulfur that smells like vomit. Occultic people tend to apply these putrid odors on themselves to attract demons and they usually do. This is that Marina Abramovich spirit cooking kind of shit where human excrements are collected and cooked. I don't want to go further than this. Our sister cried and I have done my fair share of crying too when I initially started encountering these demonic entities in human flesh. But like I wrote earlier, Azikiwi, after crying, consider filing a lawsuit. First of all, if you did not video this encounter, then you really messed up because now you're gonna have to rely on her admitting to what you said to prove she did what she actually did. The legal system is so crazy, this woman can actually come after you in court and win because you did not record this encounter. For the sake of next time, our beautiful black sister. Please record this encounter and then file a lawsuit. Make money from your enemy's attack. Yes, you had a demonic attack because I can assure you that woman was sent to you to put the spirit of perversion in you. Look, sexual stimulation is part of human nature. I'm a published author and I intend to publish even more books 
and a lot of the books would be very sexually and sensually romantic. However, it won't be like this dirty mess that demons market to us as human sexuality. You see, just want to let our beautiful sister know she doesn't need to be afraid, especially since you were conscious of this demonic spirit. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 So after staying prayed up, you better lawyer up and get paid. That's what's up. Then maybe, just maybe, you won't need to work for the next couple of years because you are that paid. Wipe those tears. It is a tearful situation and I have had my fair share of crying as well. So I'm not telling you not to cry. I'm just telling you crying alone by itself won't do anything. If every time these demons had to pay financially for their behavior, that behavior will reduce. But by saying God bless you, you made a big mistake. Get your cameras ready so that next time these demons won't be so lucky. You were targeted without a shadow of a doubt. You were targeted. You're in America, baby. This is actually a very lovely country when you exclude demonic people. America is beautiful and it's got laws that can actually be enforced. So get your camera, sister, so that next time you not only stay prayed up, you lawyer up and get paid. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. Until next time, take care of your lovely selves. And remember, life is beautiful and worth living. What happened to us? What happened to us?